Well, the big three are waiting word on their plea for a $34 billion handout. But with the economy getting more dire, who might be next in line for a bailout? And how do we draw the line between who gets federal money and who doesn't? We've got James Gattuso, Senior Research Fellow of American Heritage Foundation, and Will Straw, Associate Director, Economic Growth Center for American Progress. James, let me start with you. There's a Wall Street yep. Journal story last week. Let me get this right. An ethanol company wants a bailout. Uh, an Avis rental car wants a bailout. Mm -hmm. And the whole equipment... Avis? Avis huh. wants a bailout. That's how crazy mm -hmm. this is getting. And they, the whole equipment harder. and leasing uh, association wants their members to get bailed <laughs> out. There's no end to it. James, I say tarp the tarp, but what say you? Oh. I, I think I think it's time to, to, to draw the line, really, on bailouts. Uh, it, it looks like, uh, especially if the auto bailout goes through, that, that, that Washington will be minting bailouts like little chocolate donuts. Uh, there, there's no end to it. Uh, uh, and look, I, and I think there's a real danger that, that, that the bailout uh, of, of policies will morph into a generalized industrial policy. No, notice the New York Times, you know, describing Obama's stimulus plan over the weekend, said that, that the, the general idea is to pick winners and losers from the industrial economy and then, quote, to rain money upon the winners. Uh, this, this isn't trickle-down economics anymore. This is shower-down economics, and it's time to draw the line. Will, how do we know where to draw the line? I mean, that really does appear to be the big question, especially when you now have the government in the position of picking winners and losers which I think makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. Well, we need to make sure the economy is stable, and then we need to put in place a proper stimulus and recovery package. So rather than focusing on particular industries, uh, unless they have a really sort of central importance to the economy, we need to be stimulating the economy. So that means that the plans of the order of magnitude that Barack Obama has been talking about in terms of helping those most in need, infrastructure projects, uh, and aid to states, that's the way to get the economy back on track rather than uh, allowing each new industry to come and ask for a bailout. Well, Will, I'm glad to hear you say that. I mean, I may quibble with you about the so-called stimulus package. I want to see something for capital formation and across-the-board business tax cuts. But what you just said is you're saying let's draw the line. Let's well, stop I'm bailout saying, nation. And I, I think that's very hopeful. I'm saying let's be pragmatic. So I think where I would disagree with you is that the automakers do need a bailout. There, there's a couple of circumstances about that industry. First of all, the, the costs of failure could be even greater than the, the cost of the bailout that's being talked about. And secondly, in the economic crisis at the moment, that the cost of the individuals who work in the Detroit region could be so catastrophic and no guarantees of new jobs to go to and no guarantees that anyone would come and take over a bankrupt company at this stage. So, you know, the, I think there is a strong case for a bailout uh, for the automakers. But longer term, a stimulus and recovery for the whole economy is going to be a much more useful policy going forward. James, what do you well, think? I think that, 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 yeah, you know, I, th I think that that's part of the problem. A lot of people agree that generally uh, individual bailouts are bad, but when it comes to, to the actual request, th there's a lot of industries out there that can make a, a prima facie case that they're the most important industry or it's somehow unique. The newspapers are going to be coming up next probably with that argument. But so there's you, a big difference the between automakers the and the newspapers. I think that's, you know, that is really clear. 2.5 million I mean, people employed by the, car, by the car makers. Uh, it's yeah. uh, in such, so concentrated in one particular area as well. These are really compelling reasons why the automakers are, are we going to bail case. out newspapers? Uh, Aaron Burnett, are we, you saw that Sam Zell, right, the mm -hmm. Chicago Trib, bankruptcy, and that includes the right. L.A. Times? Is it time to bail out newspapers? I would say we don't do that, but it does raise the question of do you need someone to have courage? And I, I ask, A, whether we need someone, and B, who that person should be. I know it's a loaded question. But to stand up and say, look, there isn't. We don't have all the money in the world. We are printing it. We are borrowing it. Let's be courageous and say every one of these decisions has huge ramifications down the line. For our, no, I mean, no one's really saying that in Washington. But you need to think about what the costs of inaction would be as well. I agree that the newspapers should not have a bailout. That seems pretty clear to me. However, if you didn't bail out the automakers, the potential cost of not doing so could be even greater than the $25 billion that's being talked about at the moment. So it may be in the country's long-term interests to have a bailout of the automakers. But James, I don't know what you all are saying over at Heritage, but look, a stimulus plan, an economic growth plan, this is so unbalanced with infrastructure only. I mean, where's the business tax relief? We have the highest business tax rate in the world, uh, along with Japan. Where's the cash expensing? Where's the across-the-board right. lower tax rates for individuals? In other words, you can't just put $700 billion of infrastructure right. in. 
You know, that, 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 that's the approach that Japan has used for the last 10 years, is lots of infrastructure projects, build more roads, build more bridges, and it, and it really didn't help out Japan a whole lot. Uh, what, what's missing from the relief efforts is, is, is uh, tax relief, as, as you say. Uh, if we want to want another bailout, how, how about bailing out the taxpayers? Perhaps they're the ones that deserve relief next. James, so, briefly some, some before we go, we... I, I'm sorry, we're, we're out of time, time, but James, I just want to get you to weigh in on Emil Henry. Obviously, Republican was a, a Treasury Secretary, Assistant Treasury Secretary saying, this infrastructure plan should be something that Reagan conservatives embrace. It is investing in the prosperity and future of our country. How you structure it is the question, but conservatives should be behind the infrastructure plan. What do you say? Well, look, look I, I think we need more cash in the economy, but cash directed by the government is going to be misspent. If you want to help the economy, and Reagan conservative or, or any kind of American, you, you should recognize that the cash is better spent by the private sector. Let the private sector have the, the relief. Don't funnel it through the government. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, James. We'll appreciate it. You're right. You know, Larry, are ways yeah. to bring private sectors in. Look, there the are. private sector can run this thing, manage a lot of this yes. thing. I mean, you can have parts. You could structure toll it right. roads, mm -hmm. for example, profit, uh, profitable toll roads. Two percent of our GDP goes to infrastructure. It's ten percent in China, five percent in Europe. We'll be back.